I finished top 100 on foot jumps before. I finished top 100 on eFootball multiple times. So I do think my opinion on UFL is one of value. And while I do think this game has a lot of potential, I do think there's quite a bit lacking at the moment. The developers released a consumer feedback survey, which I responded to on stream. It uses a one to seven like point scaling system. So it's good for, you know, polling a large audience, but I do think there was a lot of nuance missed. So if by any chance this video gets in front of a developer, I hope they listen and you know, consider the nuance because there's a lot of potential here, but at the moment, just, just if a few key things and it's the most important things that are missing in my opinion for a skill-based football game uh the footage is from my live stream i was playing music at the time the music's quite a bit loud so apologies about that you can still hear me it's fine but it is not mixed correctly so i hope you can just look past that and you know maybe that's the mistake i made for the stream but hopefully the developers can you know not make these mistakes for when ufl goes into full release because i am very optimistic about this game they've made a lot of steps in the right direction but also a bit worried that they won't take the next necessary steps Please choose the statement that best describe UFL. UFL features, can you do more than one? You can. UFL features real footballers, offers a fresh gaming experience, offers a high quality gaming experience, offers skill base. Okay, so I think UFL features real footballers. Is it fresh? Yeah, it's fresh. Is it high quality? I'd say no. Offers a skill base gameplay? I'd say yes. No handicap? Yes. Is easy to play? I think, I think maybe the biggest problem UFL had with this beta is they gave people the starter squads with the really low rated players so th there's a load of people that only played one or two matches and they're playing with the 60 rated players that can't do anything and they're d judging it off that and i think that was just a major oversight they should have given everyone at least like 75 rated players in their whole team to start with but is ufl easy to play i think i think if you have a good team that's like not even a good team just 75 rated to play it is but with the really really bad players i can understand why people pick it up and just can't do anything i can see why that no scripts yes and then yeah okay so i think i think to be honest, all of them except for the high quality because the high quality is not there because dribbling isn't good and then more importantly it feels just not responsive like it's really hard to do a first time a first time pass on on ufl so that's how that's the way answers i'm going i'm sure you're saying it's very difficult i don't agree with that i understand maybe what you're trying to say but like like getting up the pitch is not that hard if you just pass it you know what i mean rate your experience of managing your team's behavior during attack so this one's tough to answer and i'll tell you why in ufl you can in ufl you can uh you can tell your players to go in behind or come short but the problem is there's a slight delay on it like in fifa when you press l1 or r1 the player comes back to you straight away or goes in behind straight away there is a little bit of a delay so i don't know if i should say like yes or no because i'm clearly trying to do freedom and attack but it's just with the delay it's not there but also i don't think you can like fifa you can press l1 tell a player to run in behind and then flick your right stick and they'll go in that direction so i think i think we'll go for four i think four would be fair right your perception of the game's frame rate including its smoothness and stability i don't think the frame rate was the issue but there was input delay and i don't even think it was input delay i think it was just the animations weren't there for a late pass or a late shot so i'll just go four oh, no, i'm not sure wait what does it say there rate your impressions of the matchmaking process including any unencountered errors use your satisfaction and uh, there was there was actually a lot of issues with the matchmaking i don't think the matchmaking times were bad but i had a very often where i was in a game the game would disconnect void completely as if the match never happened and then i couldn't go into another game because i said like you're already in a match please wait a few seconds and i would wait a few seconds and it wouldn't put me back in so i just turned off the stream we were streaming it I ended the stream, came back on the next day, I got on, then we were streaming for a while on that, and then the same thing happened. I played two games on the second stream, it happened, and I just went back to eFootball. So, I think we will go for impression mark, including any encounter errors. So, we have errors, and the quality of the opponent selection. I think the opponent selection was fine, so we'll go three. Rate your experience in managing the team's behavior during defense. I think it was good, I think the second, the, the second man press or contain expires quickly. It might be because I was using low rate defenders. And also, when you second man press, when the player gets close to the ball, they don't really tackle. They just stand there. Now, I don't know if that's um, a design choice. Maybe they want you to second man press to get close to the player and then switch into them and tackle. Or if it's just they don't have it set. And I kind of like the idea of having to second man press and then switch in yourself and tackle. But the problem is... If the opponent literally dribbles right into you, the player there should automatically tackle. And I noticed a few times that didn't happen. So I think, and also this says managing the team's behavior, not the player. Like, oh no, it says player here. So okay, so it's the team. So it's the players are not controlling. So I think, I think we'll go for a five based on what I just said there. 
Ray Hill aesthetically pleasing and in line with your expectations, players' behavior was in within the game. So this is basically saying animations, isn't it? I would say I don't really care about it, but I, it is it is lo not looking great for the animations and how the players look. So I think we'll go for a tree. Uh, rate the level of fun and enjoyment you experienced. Uh, okay, so I had a lot of fun the first night when I was on my closed alpha account with the high rate players. And then I had zero fun when I went on the second account because I had lost my progress when the open beta opened. And I had zero fun with those players. So I think I'm going to go for a four. And the reason I'm going for a four as well is because I kind of enjoyed it when I played it, but when I went on the next day, I didn't really have a pull to get onto it. And it's because dribbling is terrible. There's no sprint dribbling. It's all just full sprint. And the responsiveness wasn't great. So I think we'll go... Maybe we should go for a tree, actually. No, we'll go for a four. Ray how aesthetically pleased in line with expectation, expectation ball behavior. Okay, the ball travels way too fast. Ball travels way too fast. Everyone's saying that. Everyone's saying that. Rate your overall satisfaction and comfort with the network connection, particularly considering inspect of lag, teleport, and input. Alright, well, I had a very crazy... <laughs> You've probably seen it on my Twitter. I had a crazy instance of teleporting. Let's see if I can pull it up. Look at this guy. He's going level over the pitch. So, like, obviously that's crazy. It doesn't dissatisfy me, though. I don't really care that much because it's it was funny. And But if it did happen in a competitive game, obviously I wouldn't be laughing. But I think those things are so rare that it's not really an issue. But input delays. All right, there was so much input delay. I think, we, I think we'll go for a one on that because the input delay was terrible. And I don't think I had lag either. I don't think I had lag. Ray, how well the in-game... How many questions have we got? Okay. Ray, how well the in-game mechanics align with your expectations of controlling the player, including actions like... Okay, so, uh, yeah, this this is also dissatisfied. Um, the, the passing... When you pass the ball, it seems to be that there's no consideration of how much power you put in the pass when determining which player you'll pass to. If, if you have a simple layoff to an opponent, or a teammate, sorry, like, at, at this angle here, like, imagine a clock. Imagine your teammates for a simple option is at 1 o'clock for you, and it's half X... But there's also another player on the other wing, a teammate, that's at 12 or 11 o'clock. Now, when you want to pass to this teammate that's close to you, you want to pass it into the space slightly in front of him. But, you know, passing directly onto a player's feet can slow it down a lot. So you want to pass it directly into or in the three or four or five feet ahead of him. So you have tap X or a triangle and play it to him. But because you're aiming in that space in front of the player at the winger that's behind the player, it just zips across the pitch to that guy because there's no consideration about how much power you put into the pass when determining which players you pass it. It's all about who you're pointing at. So I think um, that's like for passing, that's really dissatisfying. For shooting, like shooting would be like here. I think the goalkeepers going across goal are a bit too strong. Receiving the ball, um, receiving the ball, you can't do one touch passes if it's very late. You can't do snappy one touch passes. You can only do one touch passes if you have plenty of time. Uh, ahead of you. You can't do a late one touch pass. Tackling. Uh, oh, yeah, am I still playing this video? Tackling. Oh, so many times I was tackling and the ball was just bouncing back to my opponent. They basically need to take what they have in EAFC. They need to take Anticipate Plus and put it on every single player basically in UFL. And what they need to do is also uh, one touch pass skill in eFootball. Put that on every single player in UFL and the game would be a lot better. Intercepting. Intercepting was actually alright. Um, just a few instances of the ball rolling through, but uh, I think you also have to press X or tackle when the ball's going by an interception to kind of be more confident in it. But I noticed a few times I was doing that and winning the ball, and a few times I wasn't, then it was going through. But uh, yeah, I, I actually think I'm extremely dissatisfied with that. Rate your overall satisfaction with the pace of gameplay, considering aspects like speed of action and rhythm of play. Um... The pace of the game, I can play a fast game, I can play a slow game, I don't mind. Pace of the pass, and the, pa the ball travels too fast, so we'll go uh, with three there. Rate your satisfaction with the game's user face, such as ease navigation, clarity of information, overall design. Alright, overall design is very good. Clarity of information is uh, lacking, I think. Like, when you put the skins on the card, it says plus 6 RP, and is that 6 plus... Like, it was like 6 RP. So, well, yeah, 6 RP extra a game, I assume. Then other instances said 400 XP. So what, am I getting 400 XP a game? Or there was other instances where it said plus 10% XP. So I don't really understand. Or am I getting the 400 XP once off? 
ease of navigation. Uh, for the first little while, there was a few issues, but I think with any game, it's kind of true that after you play it for an hour or two, you you learn learn the menus. So I don't really care about that too much. So I think we'll go for a five there. Ray right, how goalkeepers' actions and performance in the game meet your expectations? Uh, okay, there's two major issues with goalkeepers. One isn't extremely major, but across body, across the goalkeeper pair of shots are uh they're not they're not good enough the keeper saved them too often uh just nerf goalkeepers in that aspect a little bit and then secondly uh tall keepers are just way better than uh short keepers i had lens 81 rated he was uh 187 centimeters tall and he was terrible and i had fraser forrester who's 200 centimeters tall and he was 67 rated and he was amazing so i think goalkeepers are uh, need a big improvement Right, how likely you are to continue playing this game after its release on a scale from one extremely unlikely to seven extremely likely. So as I've said, like th if if sprint dribbling doesn't get added, I will play this game like never. I will like one out of seven, like the analog sprint for me football. Um, like even if every other issue I've talked about got fixed, this would only and sprint dribbling was stayed the same. It would only go up to a two. It would it would stay it would stay really low where everything in the game at the moment assuming zero improvement it's going to be a one but there is going to be improvement but they just need to fix a lot so after it's released i don't know how i meant to read that i mean, I meant to say assuming there's a few improvements i don't know i think i think hopefully a developer can listen to this video actually and uh because like the numbers aren't uh, everything yeah i think um i think i'm at the moment i'll play this a little bit on the side but it won't at the moment it doesn't replace eFootball for me it just doesn't replace it oh there's more questions there's more questions please correct oh, the pace feels stiff first last game just fast i prefer slower tempo oh, that's it that's done okay it's done 